We all know that air travel and the security process connected with it can be, what's a good word, challenging. It's added to the amount of time you need to deal with that paradise, which we call the airport. Even when you take all the right steps to avoid problems, you always seem to get in that security line with the person who didn't. But the reality is that we deal with it, or if you want to go overseas, it doesn't give you much of an option other than to stay home. My first guest today came across another challenging situation that airport security checks can create. It's called overreaction, or in a way you might even want to call it, to a degree, guilt by association. Here to explain what happened to him and his family as they went to and returned from an overseas vacation is the mayor of Prospect Park, New Jersey, Mayor Mohammed Karula. Thanks for being here today, Mr. Mayor. My pleasure, Chris. And learn more Hello. about Prospect Park. Their website is prospectpark.net. So, um, as I said, you, you basically had to deal with an extra degree of attention, both leaving the U.S. and coming back. Talk about the to what degree was the, uh, was the security process focused on you and your family? Well, it was, it was extremely extensive. Um, the frustrating part is they claimed that it was random every single step in the way, except when I was being interviewed inside the office. Uh, that's the only time the agent, after I pressed him several times, said, look, I was asked to ask you questions, and I asked by whom. He said DHS. Um, but, you know, as, as we were trying to leave the U.S., we actually missed our flight on the first day because the agent at the counter um, was being asked questions by TSA, according to him. And bottom line, they kept asking, are there any firearms in the bags? To the point I said, get them here, let them inspect the bags if they have any suspicion. Uh, you know, we have nothing to hide. Um, so we missed the flight the first day. The next day, uh, we ended up about almost five hours between the time we walked into the airport to the first to the point we finished TSA inspection. Uh, which included extensive inspection of all of us, including my 14 months old at that time, who had four S's on his uh, boarding pass. Um, so, and when we got to the plane, right when we were about to enter the plane, they had another four TSA agents inside the tunnel that stopped us again, inspected us again. Wow. Do you think that this was... Profiling, or was this a case of the TSA and the security officers just, you know, playing the odds? Are they, you know, maybe they're mandated to get a certain, you know, number of scores every month or every every fiscal year, and they were just playing the odds, thinking that uh, well, okay, then for the obvious, this is someone who, should, who we should look at. No, I, I think it was clear profiling. Uh, I, I think they were uh, looking for us. They were waiting for us. Uh, the fact is I couldn't get my boarding passes online uh, both days when we were trying to leave. And when we returned, there was a, the agent right outside the plane uh, supposedly randomly selecting us when we were one of the very last people to leave the plane. So if they were there at the time of the arrival of the plane, several hundred people passed them and no one was stopped randomly, I would uh, say. Uh, I didn't see anybody in the office uh, from uh, the Turkish airline flight. And then we were selected, and the uh, amount of interrogation and the amount of time we spent in the office was a little longer than what normally happens. Look, I travel a lot, and I've been uh, in these offices, and I, I respect that we have to protect our borders. But this was a clear case of we're targeting you. There's something. I don't know what it is, and I would appreciate that someone would clarify it. And, sir, I mean, they're, they're saying that the typical out, this is something we can't publicly discuss when, the, when they're asked by the press. But certainly in private, they could give you an explanation. Absolutely. Absolutely. They, they, you know, obviously these agents, uh, I'm assuming, are restricted to what they can say. They basically, they just said, we were asked to interview you, and they're doing what, what uh, they have to do. I'm looking at this as a devil's advocate, and you just said, too, you, you've, you've traveled often. Have you traveled to places where if someone looked at your, your travel history, 
that would create to whatever degree a red flag or at least a yellow flag. Yeah, I mean, uh, look, I traveled to Syria seven times during the uprising against Assad, the regime, but I've traveled with recognized organizations. I've made all my activities public on social media. That was my way of promoting what we were doing. Um, I've, you know, because of my activities, I was spoken to by the FBI in the past, and I didn't make a big deal of it because I understand national security. I understand we need to be safe, but this went beyond being safe to uh, profiling uh, because of my name and, and, and my identity. Um, I've served my community now for over 18 years as an elected official prior to that, a volunteer fireman. My record speaks for itself. So for me to be targeted like this and to be asked directly, did you meet with any terrorists, is, is a clear case of profiling based on identity. We're talking with Prospect Park, New Jersey Mayor Mohamed Kerula. Pros- Pro- prospectpark.net is the town's website and listening to issues and ideas. Yeah, that, that was to me when I'm reading the story, the various stories about your experiences, for someone just to sit there and say, I mean, is this the degree that our security agents are trying to break through terrorist cells by just saying, hey, do you know any terrorists? Like someone, if someone did, would they say, oh, yeah, I know, there's Amir, there's Ahmed? And I mean, that's just a ridiculous question to ask somebody if you're, if you're sincere in trying to determine who you have in front of you. I, I I agree with you, Chris. I mean, uh, that's that doesn't look to me like uh, intelligent uh, research of of uh, terrorism. Um, terrorists, uh, obviously, for for the most part, these terrorist organizations have uh, social media. They they speak online. Um, I I know our country can look into anybody's uh, online activities, and they're more than welcome, you know, as, as uh, if, if they have any suspicion, a uh, real suspicion, they could, they could get a warrant and, and check out my activities. I have nothing to hide, never did. Um, I've always been public and transparent about my activities. So, so it's, it's a clear indication that, hey, your name is Mohammed, you must know a terrorist. And then they also confiscated your your phone for a total of 12 days, which you would also think, too, if we had this massive organization looking for terrorism, I mean, you can't spring for a USB cord to on the spot. Okay, let's look at my phone. I'll sit here, hook it up to your laptop. If you see something suspicious, call an official. I'll give you permission to download what you think is suspicious. Right. Let me be there in front of you. I mean, what, what are you uh, what are you trying to find? I, I, I agree with you. Don't, and don't. Here's the thing. Also, and, and uh, this is where they 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 cause trouble to themselves. Don't take me and say we're going to get past the uh, long lines. It's going to be a few minutes. Then hold me with my infant, toddler, two other children, and my wife for three hours. Um, you know, just. Just be honest and forthcoming. We need your help in this particular, you know, we have a particular issue that we need to discuss. It's, you, you're not going to drag net me into something when I'm very transparent all the way. Um, I, 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 again, I call it unintelligent and uneducated um, methods of, of uh, trying to find terrorism. Are you... Uh... I mean, you're certainly speaking out and, re- and bringing a attention, put, putting a spotlight on something that's really, if an organization or a body of government is trying to root out terrorists, this is not the way to be doing it. So that's one one of the positives coming out of what you're doing. Are you planning on doing anything else in reaction to all this? Well, uh, as as you know, I'm, I'm working with CARE. They've handled my case. They, they were the ones who... Um, uh, retrieved my phones for me, which, by the way, as far as I understand, we were told were not inspected. Uh, so, which which leaves another question mark of how important it was to take those phones, uh, and why was my laptop not taken? If there's anything hidden electronically, wouldn't my laptop also make sense? Uh, I, I think um, the I don't know what was going on in the agent's mind. 
Um, but uh, I'm assuming that they realized that they made a mistake uh, and, and the phones were, were returned. Um, but we haven't ruled out any legal action. Uh, I'll continue working with the organization to uh, determine our next step. And hopefully the, the higher-ups and the body that we call airport security are hearing the story too and realizing that there's some fine-tuning, certainly at least, that needs to be done. I'm, I'm reading your story, Mr. Mayor, and I keep thinking back to when my mother passed away and had her cremated. She was always afraid to travel, so I wanted to take her ashes on an airplane out to Southern California where a friend had a boat where we were going to do a, a burial at sea. And the funeral director gave me a, a file folder of papers because this was after the September 11th attacks, and he was certainly raising caution. Where you're walking on an airplane with an empty box filled with a powdery substance, someone might just be take an interest in that. Mm-hmm. Nobody stopped me. I mean, the the bulge of the paper in my jacket pocket made practically made it look like I was packing a gun first and foremost. And I put the yeah. box with their ashes through the X-ray because I wasn't going to check her with baggage. Obviously, the way airports lose baggage. But uh, right. I guess because I had a, a Catholic and a Christian name, no one even said anything. I didn't have to show a single piece of paper. So it just shows the the imbalance, I think, that takes place. Yeah, and I, and I think TSA, DHS, uh, CBP, they need to train their, their officers better to uh, use proper discretion when, when it comes to uh, who they interview, how they interview, how did... How did how did I even come up on the system? Um, you know, I, I I don't know, and no one uh, clears it up for me, and no one gives me the opportunity to clear my name if there is anything derogatory against me. That is the frustrating part. Uh, there's definitely a lot to, that needs to be uh, done, as as you mentioned, uh, when it comes to streamlining and making uh, our agents on the border uh, do a better job uh, screening for terrorism. And this isn't an indictment of the entire TSA. There are many who get it right and do it right. But when you have cases like this, it just sets a dark cloud over a place where it's, it's, it's important that the job is done well and it's done right. That's, that's, a thing, that's a lesson that comes from this story, I think. 100%. Look, I, I respect uh, law enforcement. I, I respect the fact that, um, you know, there are sincere people who want to protect us, uh, but we don't deserve the harassment. Uh, nor the intimidation. Um, the agents knew that they got us in the airport. There's nothing we could do at that point other than, than cooperate. That's why at one point when they said, we want to glance at your phone, I said, go ahead. But I understand the difference between glance and taking your phone for half an hour, 45 minutes. That is not glancing. And, you know, I got my children getting, you know, all antsy. Um, I have family waiting for me. That's complete inconvenience, um, disregard for for our uh, rights as as citizens. Uh, you know, w- w- if I'm giving you uh, an inch, don't just walk all over me. Very true. He is the mayor of Prospect Park, New Jersey. The website learning more about the community is prospectpark.net. Mayor Mohammed Karula, thanks so much for stepping forward with your story and. Hopefully we'll bring about the the change that your experience is demonstrating needs to be done. Thanks for being here today. I hope so, too. Thank you, Chris.